Let's bring in now Ford O'Connell, GOP strategist. Also with us, Melissa Armo, founder and CEO of the Stock Swoosh. Great to have you both here with us. We'll let Ford jump in and ask Melissa a couple questions, but we'll start with my questions for Melissa today. Great to see you, everyone. Melissa, one report I read today in Business Insider talked about foreign bond investors being, quote, extremely concerned about U.S. deficits and debt. The warning comes amid signs that demand for U.S. Treasury bonds is waning. Uh, we see countries like Japan and China not interested in U.S. debt like they once were. So what does this mean for the average investor? Well, for the average investor, it doesn't mean a whole lot except for what you pay in interest rates on your credit cards or to buy a home or car. It affects overall interest rates. Most regular everyday people are not invested in buying bonds. It could be a portion of people's retirement portfolios, but most people are not buying bonds. So overall, it really just affects overall interest rates. And the problem with the downgrade, as you spoke about the Moody's downgrade, which ironically came out after four o'clock on Friday, after the market closed, which I thought was strange. Um, and then going into a weekend, it was a Friday night. Uh, the market started off down a little bit today, but now we're trying to recover. But the problem is going from stable to negative isn't good. It especially isn't good going into 2024 when we already have high interest rates. So typically, U.S. bonds were considered a safe investment. That's why you would have a 30-year fixed mortgage at 3% or 4%. And people, people meaning banks, were invested very heavily in bonds. And also, you, you saw people say, well, these are safe. They're backed by the U.S. government. But the problem is that we have so much debt right now. And the Biden administration keeps, keeps, keeps growing the debt. Um, and then mm -hmm. we're going into 2024 when interest rates still could go up at least another quarter to a half a point before they drop back again. And I think foreign investors are nervous and rightfully so. And obviously you saw that downgrade with Moody's as well. Yeah, and this is another report I read here from Bloomberg that the impact of U.S. Treasury auctions, you know, they put this stuff out for sale where investors can buy it, foreign investors and the like, is becoming a more important indicator of the U.S. economy than the job market. Do you agree with that? Well, I would say for now, yes. But if the unemployment rate rises over 4%, then I'd say no. And that's where you would probably see the point where the Fed would consider lowering rates. I don't think the Fed is going to even consider lowering rates unless they get inflation down to 2%, which could take another 12 to 24 months, which is why they're going to keep rates higher for now. I don't think it's going to really affect until it hits over 4%, which may or may not be the case. You know, when the numbers come out, honestly, John, I really don't even believe the numbers anymore. You know, the numbers aren't even right. including all the people that have left the left the workforce. They don't include people with a certain number of hours that they're only working part time. And then, of course, you have all the illegal immigrants that are coming in, which are picking up extra jobs and extra work than from the regular Americans that are trying to find a job. So, I mean, the numbers are so convoluted, you almost don't even believe them anymore. Right. And what we hear from Janet Yellen so often is that, oh, the job market is strong. Things are strong. Even when you hear Jerome Powell talking about interest rates, sometimes he talks about the job market being too strong. And that's why they might have to raise interest rates again. All right. You mentioned immigration and Ford. Feel free to hop in anytime you want here. But I want to talk about this New York Times. They wrote a hit piece on former President Trump's immigration plan that we talked about earlier. They're claiming that economic turmoil will follow if there is a mass deportation effort anything that Trump is talking about. Quote, Americans should understand, according to one person they interviewed, that these proposals are authoritarian, often illegal. They would rip apart nearly every aspect of, of American life, tanking the economy, violating the basic civil rights of millions of immigrants and native-born Americans. Ford, do you buy that, that Donald Trump's immigration, illegal immigration crackdown would hollow out the U.S. economy? Absolutely not. Actually, in 2019 and 2020, when we were at a 45 year low in illegal immigration, wages actually increased. And under Joe Biden huh. bringing in millions and millions of people, wages are now down anywhere from three to five percent. So now in history has shown this. This once again is sort of what I would call a chamber of commerce immigration lobbyist article that is being pushed over and over. And the New York Times is going to tell the educated elite who read their newspaper that this is a, in fact true when it's not. And it, this goes all the way back to even 1925 when we actually decreased re legal immigration even our wages went up. So if you want to help the American worker, the best thing you can do is implement Donald Trump's immigration policies. What do you think, Melissa? Will uh, Trump's deportation plan hollow out the U.S. economy? I think 
we have a huge problem because we either have borders or we don't have borders. So earlier numbers a couple of months ago was 2 million people came over the border in 2023. And then, I, then I heard 8 million. Nobody knows the number. For Trump, I think he should campaign on it being a safety issue that, you know, as far as how, we don't know who these people are coming through. Again, before people worried about COVID, now no one's worried about anything with that. With that. I think Trump should run on this issue and hardline it because, I mean, this is one thing, particularly in New York, which we're dealing with the situation right now, it is just encapsulated the city. This is the one issue that Democrats get actually in Manhattan are aligned with conservatives and actually agree because we have too many people coming in. It's become such a big problem. One, it's taking away jobs from people. Again, it's preventing them from getting raises, but it's also a safety issue. And that's what Trump should focus on. He should focus on safety. I think that's what it is for a lot of people. It's safety in their own communities. When you see people, and I saw a video of this, people just sleeping at Chicago O'Hare Airport, like it's an open air shelter for illegal immigration. It's, it's got, something's gotta change. Melissa, great to have you back with us. Thanks for your insight on the bond market, U.S. debt, treasury bills, stuff to consider. Talk to your financial advisor about those things if you're interested. Ford's gonna stick around with us. More to come here on John Bachman Now. 